this episode, I've decided to highlight two standard American marches from the golden age of the march, which lasted from the 1870s to the mid-1920s. And in these 50 or so years, many composers and many bands composed, stylized, and otherwise honed the musical form into what we know now. The march as a form is typically a work comprised of connected strains of music, which are each repeated, then a trio of some sort, often paired with a dogfight or break strain, which does exactly that, providing a more bombastic contrast to the usually lyrical trio section. Many marches often end with a final presentation of the trio theme in a full band grandioso style. So in picking which march to feature in the 29th episode of this series, I decided to pick two since marches are typically short. I picked two American marches from the Golden Age that weren't by Sousa, but are actually kind of one-hit wonders with very American themes. The first march we will examine is the National Emblem March, which was composed in 1902 on a train ride by the bandmaster and composer Edwin Eugene Bagley, who had a traveling family band. While on the train ride, he composed this march around the first 12 notes of the National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. He completed the march, but was frustrated by the ending and discarded the manuscript. But thankfully, his band found the music and rehearsed it in the back of the train and performed it for him. They decided to put it in their shows, and the work was eventually published in 1906 by Tin Pan Alley man Leo Feist. The tune became incredibly popular, being performed by many bands across the country, and even by the world-famous Arthur Pryor Band and the President's own United States Marine Band. Even John Philip Sousa regarded the march very highly, and listed it as one of the best marches, a list that was almost entirely made up of his own compositions. The great conductor and figurehead of the modern concert band, Frederick Fennell, said that National Emblem was one of his absolute favorite marches and said it to be as perfect a march as a march can be. The march is constructed with mostly all original music other than the 12 notes quoted from the Star Spangled Banner. It has an introduction, a repeated first and second strain. The trio, as it's labeled, begins with quarter notes vamped on the beat, then statements by the low brass, first in A flat, then by the woodwinds and cornets in C major. This chromatic mediate relationship is reminiscent of a typical break strain or dogfight, while not in the formal sense. There is a final, minor-tinged melody which concludes the trio and the section is repeated with no final grandiose strain or even a stinger to end it. The second march is by the famed New York City bandmaster Edwin Franco Goldman, who led for many years a very fine band which would give free concerts in Central Park. Chimes of Liberty was one of Goldman's own compositions, and he wrote the piece in 1922 with revisions made in 1937. Goldman's march demonstrates the form described previously with its AABBCDCDC structure. 